Welcome back to the second half, everybody. Freddie, who's next? Tommy, our next guests are Martin Hayes and Miles O'Reilly. Oh, my God. How are you? Good, 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 good. No. How are you doing? I'm always great. How are you? Well, I don't think we've ever met. No, never met. Uh, uh, but I've a pleasure of meeting Martin okay. before. Um, how are you both? Very well. Um, I was listening to you recently, a late night drive across the country. Yeah. And I find that your music just... It's late night music, I think, yeah. Isn't it? I, uh, in some ways, I actually record late at night a lot of times, yeah. 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 So. I got it's that after gig energy. It's hard to know yeah. what to do with it. Yeah. Uh, and I find into the car and driving across the Midlands at midnight, listening to you, just uh, well, that's great. I, I, you know, I, I, I wouldn't do that myself. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put myself on and drive across the country. But I, I'd put something else on. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, Miles, I know of you as a filmmaker. Um, and I think, remember, years ago, coming across your stuff that you'd done maybe with, I might hope I remember, like, like people like Damien Dempsey and Glenn Hansard. and done a lot of work with Glenn. Yeah. Uh, he's been really good to me in terms of, um, I come into projects with him and he lets me make it up. Like, I just document his life generally and his creative process and he lets me make up the edits myself and create little films for him, which became big films too, but... And it, it seems more than... Um, I don't know if I've told you this before, but I loved the album that you did with your dad. That's right, yeah. Because yeah. it's recorded in the kitchen, but there's... The feet are pounding away. There's a great the whole thing, yeah, beat yeah, to it. Yeah. And when, when you're not playing with your dad... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, you'd, you'd leave the solid ground. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I, the, when it, the stuff that I've seen of yours, Miles, it seems to be... I wouldn't... There's a kind of a connection in that it doesn't move to visually, it doesn't move to the that kind of a beat. It's kind of slightly, how would you describe it? Slightly sp spirit film. Is that too elevated a phrase? For it? Well, it means it, it kind of moves to the noise of the atmosphere that's created in the room. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of. I'd involve, if I'm filming music that's, that has an audience, they'd be as much part of the film yeah. uh, as the performer. And then their movements will dictate the pace of, of the edits as well. You know? How come, what, what are you doing together? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm sure, you, you know, uh, I, I met Miles uh, at the Electric Picnic uh, about 2010, I would think it was. And uh, Dennis and I, no, playing a late night gig. It seemed like a very good idea that we should play a very late night gig at the, at the electric picnic. And uh, I was told that, oh, it'll be quiet, the stage was beyond, it's going to be this moody atmosphere and I'm, I'm going to sit into it. But actually, there were like about 5,000 people there and they were stoned and drunk and, and there were uh, discos going everywhere and there was, was Saturday DJs night. picking all kinds, it was completely crazy. And Dennis and I couldn't really connect with the energy at all. We were trying to kind of, like, we couldn't even hear each other. We couldn't yeah. tune our instruments, nothing. But it, it, I felt like I, I was one of the worst gigs I'd ever played. And a few months later, I get this uh, little email from A. Miles O'Reilly. says, I was the, the filmmaker that night. Would you like to see the video? And I thought, oh, please tell me this didn't happen. Like, yeah, you know, they're going to make a video of it. And I just thought, oh, God. So I, di I just ignored I, I pretended I didn't yeah, get that yeah, email. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I'm going to pretend this is not happening. And uh, so anyhow, um, like maybe a, almost, I don't know, it was a long time after I said, I'll take a little peek and see what it was. Yeah. And I was surprised. He made us look good. He made us sound good. And he's a big guy. And he made himself invisible. Like he was apparently this close to me, but I never saw him the whole time. I had no idea I was being filmed. Yeah. And uh, so since that, since, since that effort, uh, we have worked on a number of projects. We've gone to India together and did a film there. And I, when I made the quartet album uh, with my own quartet, Miles came and filmed all of that as well. Yeah. And so we've mm. been good friends ever since. Mm. And, uh, and I, I just said, if he could make it like a disaster gig actually look kind of half decent, yeah. he's my man. Well, it was actually, <laughs> it was actually remarkable to see 5,000 people who are there for the rave. They're there to kick it off. Yeah. And um, 
Martin Hayes comes on with the fiddle, Martin and Dennis. And uh, honest to God, it was like watching, it was like witnessing Jimi Hendrix. It was like I an art, like I couldn't it. believe, I couldn't yeah, believe yeah. it. A fiddle player would have this command of, well, it's my first time seeing you live, but yeah. <laughs> to see how the crowd reacted to, to, to Martin was astonishing. So say you're in a room, mm. and we'll use Martin as our example, <laughs> and the, you feel the spirit is moving. Mm. What do you decide on camera movement mm. and what to watch, as opposed to kind of, I want Martin's face, I want the crowd's face. Yeah. Do you know, how do you, what informs that instinctual movement? Um, I have a background in music, I played a lot of music up until I was in my late 20s and um, got very uh, dismayed by the industry. Uh, but uh, the amount of experience I would have on a stage okay. um, and with other musicians, I know when a musician's having a good time or not. Yeah. And I think I can really, you can really sense it in their, in their posture and their face and the small details of their yeah. face. And, and if I get to film a, f uh, a face and fill a screen with the face, it becomes a theatre. And it's, it's quite easy to see um, if Martin's having a good performance or not. Yeah. You know, if he's turning in his skin it's, or not. Um, so it's kind of, if they, uh, musicians do have to trust me in that sense as well. I mean, the, it, that goes against what happened in Body and Soul, where <laughs> you're does, actually yeah. having the worst gig does, of your I life. The, well, I thought I was, you know, but maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought, you it know. Was you know, Like if a gig is, yeah. sometimes if a gig is operating at 90%, I go, oh, maybe that's 20%, you know. Like, I, I, yeah. like as, soon as, as soon as it's not, like, on, like, I think it's completely falling apart, you know. So well, it wasn't uh, really. Are you quite... Moody then in terms of your shows, like would you be, would you walk off stage despondent yeah. until the following morning if you did if you didn't? Oh yeah, I, I don't, I I purposely don't cut myself any slack. I I give myself no excuse. I give myself no explanation or right to an explanation. Yeah, uh, because I feel like if I do that, then well, well I I keep I keep creating them and uh, and and eventually it won't be there. Uh, I mean, I'm the way I think about gigs is like it's either on a live, spontaneous feeling and happening, or it's not, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm very much don't want to kind of ever find myself dialing a gig in. Like, that's just, I don't ever want that to happen. Give us a tune. I'll give you a tune, yeah. I'll have to be, I can't be mournful now, I guess, right? <laughs> put you in, put you in a tight spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was going to do the rolling wave, but it felt like, you know, maybe, maybe it's just too sad for Tommy right now, and he's not driving home across the country, sir. Anyway, I like the lightness of Jeez, that. that was great, isn't it? Uh, what was that tune, and when do you think it was composed? Uh, I don't know when it was composed. It's called the Holly Bush, and I remember listening to uh, Matt Malai and Sean Keane play that right. along with Artie Midlen, and I was going, "That's just such a gorgeous tune." Yeah, yeah. and uh, very simple. But uh, then again, a lot of the music is simple. But after at a certain point, I go. There's nothing wrong with simplicity and clarity and obviousness in it. You yeah. know, so I'm, I'm quite comfortable with that. But yeah, uh, the, the, the melodies are like they're a continuously mutated process. Like they change in everybody's hands. Like you always have to think of these 
tunes as having a multitude of authors, you know, like various people affecting them and impacting them over time and changing them and passing them on and changing them. So there's a collective kind And of your role as an individual yeah. to play according to your metabolism. In a way, yeah. You yeah. have to do two things. You have to honour the tradition and you also have to own it on some level. You, you have to become part of the tradition and you have to have the, you know, you have to contribute to it as well. Yeah. You know? So you have to give back to it in a certain way. So, yes, it, it, it needs to be, have creative possibilities in your hands, you know, I think. What uh, ambitions do you have with the work at the moment? At the moment? Yeah, or is ambition too narrow a term for the Ambit momentum of it or...? Ambitions of the work? Um, I just want to keep building a collection of works that I can leave behind, I guess. I think that if you like one of my films and if you investigate further, you'll find you like them all. And so I'd love to leave this earth with, uh, with, a, with a giant body of work that once somebody is informed by one thing they've seen, they keep digging and it changes yeah. their whole attitude towards music and how valuable and enriching and nurturing m music can be, yeah. not just for the musician, but for somebody who receives it. Did you ever, when you work with a comedian? <laughs> I almost worked with you, I think. Almost, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think there was a moment. That was just before my honeymoon, actually, just really, before yeah, I met yeah. Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, lads. it was a uh, pleasure chatting to you. Great, thank you, Tommy. Thank, thank you. you.